Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims and we are back with more Tengoku Struggle. That's what we're doing. Okay, so I finished this. Um... I mentioned this. You probably saw the community tab a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I finished this game and I was coming in to record the last part where we do all the little side things, do the bad ending and the side stuff and whatever, and realized that the last two hours of this did not record my voice. I kept looking over and I could see it record. I could see it moving. So it didn't occur to me that the microphone was not plugged in and that what it was registering was the game sound. And it was recording that and not me. It's my own fault because the night before I was jumping up to get the bird to his poopy spot and I knocked into my microphone and unplugged it a little bit and I saw that I did that and I was like, okay, and then I just totally fucking forgot and when I came back and I didn't even think about like, let me just pop it back at, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, I don't know. So it's my own fault. So I spent two hours not recording anything. So we got to do it again. And then when I sat down last Thursday to do it, I was like, son of a bit. Like, that was just like, what the fuck? And then my roof's leaking. So I saw a giant fucking water stain and I was like, what the fuck? So um, it's been like almost a week now since I finished recording and did this. So like, it'll be like, it's new to me again. I'll be like, oh, I kind of remember this or whatever. Because there's nothing worse than recording two hours and then the next day realizing you have to do it all over again. You're like, I, I just did this. But now it's been nearly a week. I think I did that on like Wednesday. It's now Monday um, because I've been waiting for someone to not come and look at my fucking roof because it's also been raining on and off. And then the days that it's nice, nobody fucking shows up. So all day Saturday, it was like, somebody's supposed to come. We'll give you, we'll text you with like a time frame of when they think they're going to be there. Never heard a damn thing. Nobody showed up. Okay. I don't want to have my computer and everything hooked up up here because it's in my gaming loft. Of course it is. And I already took some of my stuff down in the area where the roof leak is, just in case it got worse. But thank God it started to dry. My landlord did come yesterday, went upstairs, went up into the attic and was like, it's all dry up there. So that's good. Don't know what's underneath the floorboard or like in between, like say, because I think, I think there is like plywood up there instead of just the beams and the insulation. I think they put plywood over the beams so you can easily walk around up there. I don't know. I won't go up there. It's terrifying. I don't like attics. Okay. Like, or climbing up those rickety little stairs. Mm, those are going to crack under my fat ass, okay? So, but, like, he showed me pictures or whatever. So, I'm like, oh, okay. It seems like they have, like, plywood up there. At least the wood in that corner where that the leak is is dry. So, that's good. But who knows the insulation underneath it? You know what I mean? Um, So, luckily, like, it's just a water stain right now. And it's not, like, dripping or haven't gotten so much worse. But it might rain today. They might be coming today or tomorrow. Um, I did say like my mom's coming this week, so I can't do too much. Cause like, she's going to be here Wednesday. So I can't record really Wednesday or Thursday, Friday. She's going to be here all weekend. And then she's going to be here Monday. So I won't have like, and then they're like, so it's like, if the person doesn't come today or tomorrow, they're not going to come till next week. And then like, I, so then I'm just like, I can't fucking do anything. I'm like, Oh my God. Guys, I'm sick of fucking August. Like, I really just want to cry. I cannot stand this fucking month. One more fucking minute. I know it's September now when you're watching this. And I hope the fuck September is just like all the good things in the world. Because August has been a nothing but a cunt. And I swear to God, August needs to fuck the hell off. Never come back. And I don't ever want to see this month again. We're going straight from July to September next year. Fuck August. You're cut off, bitch. Pluto's not a planet. You're not a month anymore, August. Pluto will always be a planet to me, but you know what? Fuck that. I'm done with August. We're never, ever getting back together, August. Like, ever. Like, God, I hate this month so much. So I'm sitting here like, I'm going to try to record these last three hours of Tetsunojo's route again. again. I did two out of the three, but we're going to do it again. We're going to try. <laughs> And I'm just letting you know, if you don't see Goemon's route right after this one ends, it's because there's been people in my house doing things because then my landlord was talking about like, oh, he's might just, the 
handyman's mention just cutting open the ceiling or whatever. And I'm like, um, and he's like, oh, don't worry, we'll fix it. And I'm like, that's not what I'm concerned about. Of course, you're going to fucking fix it. Like, like, hi, but I wasn't worried about that. I'm worried about the fact that this is my gaming loft and all of the fucking shit on the walls and all of my anime merch and my Otome game stuff and all of my ga- everything is up here on the walls and you want me to take it all fucking down so it doesn't get destroyed. <gasps> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah, so I haven't done that. I took some things off of the shelf and the bookshelf that are like right under where the water stain is. Just so like if it did start raining water, it would be like not getting that stuff. And like I have a bucket there. But like I haven't moved my little bookshelf or anything else because I'm like, I'll move it if all of a sudden it starts dripping. Like, yes. But like until then, like I just moved some of the stuff in the general area. But I'm like, I'm going to have to like move fucking everything because it's going to get fucking ruined if he's cutting stuff because like hi the handyman's going to come and do his job he's not going to be like let me just be very careful and very delicate and very dainty to not ruin your stuff because he doesn't have time for that he wants to come in do his job and get it done so that he can move on to his next job you know what i mean he's not going to spend extra time here just because of my stuff you know like I'm not saying he's going to be insensitive and, like, break all my shit, but I'm just saying, like, he's not going to be concerned about that, you know? He's concerned about getting his job done properly and in an in an efficient amount of time. Not like, well, let me take three times longer so I don't... Da-. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm going to have to take all my shit down. So, like, hopefully, if for some reason he shows up today or tomorrow and he looks and he's like, okay, well, I cut him. Like, are you going to cut it open? Because then I'm going to need, like, ten minutes to, like, fucking move all my shit. Because, like... I'm going to have to take everything. Oh, my motherfucking God. I'm looking at all the stuff on my walls and it's so depressing. Because, like, oh, Jesus. Ugh. Anyway, I can't handle this fucking month anymore. So if for some reason you don't see Goemon's route go up right after, that's what's happening. Because I just, I can't handle anymore. I know you guys have been patient with me and I appreciate that. But, like... And I know a lot of people have said, like, if you can't deal with your channel right now, but this is the only thing that's keeping me going. Because I sat down to record and realized that I missed, that the things didn't record the last two hours and the leak in the roof was on the 8th, which would have been, my channel would have been gone that day. And I was like, you know, that's the only reason I could power through all of that other shit happening that day. Because I was like, but I still have my channel and that's the only reason I got through it. Because otherwise, I don't think I would have survived. Like, I don't think I could have handled it. I can't hand. I mean, to be fair, if I didn't have a channel, I wouldn't have been recording the rest of this. You know what I mean? But I'm like, but my channel's still there. And this is what I have. And this is what gets me through stuff. It's just, you're just now going to impact my enjoyment of life. Because this happens to be where the water leak. Is. Okay. All right. Could have been worse. Could have been in my closet like it was in my apartment. Which then, I'm pretty sure, is the reason it was leaking for so goddamn long into the attic area. And I know I, there was never a water stain, nothing, until all of a sudden one day I'm like, what is that god-awful dripping? Because it was just pouring into my closet. Thank God in the center, but I'm like, I have a feeling that all the mold and the mildew and the wetness that was just accumulating up there before it started leaking through uh, was probably... What ruined some of my fucking shoes? I'm sure it was the fucking moisture that ruined some of my fucking shit. I'm like, mm, okay. So like, you know, and thankfully it's on the wall. This it's the ceiling, but a little bit of the wall. It hasn't gone on to the other side where my bedroom is because I'm like, if you think you're chopping down the fucking ceiling or cutting it, all my fucking jewelry is hanging up on that wall. I'm like, no fucking way am I taking all that shit down. Do you know how fucking up? Oh my fucking God. Oh, dear fucking God. I can't handle anymore. I really fucking can't. August needs to go fuck off, okay? So anyway, let's try to do this route again. We'll finish it. Whatever. Maybe. Who knows? If these videos never post, it's just because August, like, hit me with a goddamn bus. Because, like, I have doctor's appointments in a couple of days, too. And I'm just, like, not looking forward to that. Or the fact that I got my car inspected. And I'm like, this was a bad idea bringing my car in in August. Because, you know, you know, you know it's fine. Because when everything is wrong with my fucking car, at least I'll blame August for it. Because if I brought it in in September and everything was wrong, then I'd be like, why? Why is August leaking into September? You know? So, like, let's just get it out of the way and find out everything that's wrong with my fucking car now. Oh, dear God, guys. Oh, sweet Jesus. Anyway, 
I'm pretty fucking sure where we left off. Because, again, it's been a while. And, again, I recorded this already. Was We said there was a huge order or whatever. And so we're coming in here to yell at him. And we think it's the fuck ton of Neophils that he said he was going to order for Tama. Spoiler, kind of is. Other stuff, too. But it kind of is. They don't really go over it here. They go over it later. But anyway, I spoiled it. But whatever. Tetsunojo, are you there? It's so weird reading this again. Anxious, I returned to the house to find it frighteningly quiet. Although, good thing is, because it's been a while. I don't remember what's happening. Like, I don't quite remember. I'll remember as we go. No. Sorry, bird. Huh. My room... As I went into the hallway to head toward my room, I noticed the door was left slightly open. It's slightly deja vu -y. Wait, did he put anything on the shelf yet? Do we have anything on the shelf for him? Because he's living with us now. Oh, right. Okay. I didn't want to understand what the items left in the middle of the room implied. I can't believe him. This is just so messed up. Sure, he might be a top-selling artist with so much money he doesn't know what to do with it. But he doesn't seriously think he can settle everything with money, right? Oh, a letter? Before I must cross the Mitsuse River, I wish I could simply vanish like the foam in a tear. The Mitsuse River? That must mean the Sanzu River, right? Before I must cross the Mitsuse River, I wish I could simply vanish... Like the foam in a tear. I don't know what this means, but it really sounds sad. Oh, right. Hurry! Do you know what this means? This is a part of an old story. However, it comes with another part of it. With another part? Though we may not have known each other long, I still hope for you not to have made your vow to another at the river. It is a verse of a man who is drowning in regret over his desired woman marrying another man. I think I hypothesize, like, I'm wondering, like, because, you know, like, he kept saying, like, Goemon's going to steal her away. And Goemon's like, hell yeah, I will. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did we, like, like, we know, do, do we know yet? Like, so now I just don't remember what we know and what we don't know and, like, what I remember from the end or whatever. But, like. No, I mean, we know that they, we are, I think, already know at this point that Jack is from the same time period as everybody. Everybody's fucking 100 year old. We already knew. We suspected he talks like an old man. Back in my day, we didn't have streaming. He talks about as old as I am. So, you know, um, but I think I hypothesized. I was like, I wonder if, like, if he remembers his past life and going on stealing his woman, but, like, going on did steal a lot of shit from him, to be fair, so. You know what I mean? Like, kind of wondered, but I feel like he would have said something about that, and I don't think he ever said anything about that specifically, so. Huh. That sounds similar to what Tetsunoja was murmuring about yesterday. It means, sure, I didn't make my vow with you, but I feel so miserable you would be carried across the Sanzu River by another man. And, like, I mean, that if you think about it, like, we've already hypothesized that we were in love with going on in our past life and we just don't remember it. He remembers. But if it was like a weird love triangle thing back in the time, Tetsunojo would remember. Goemon's keeping his mouth shut till his route, obviously. But Tetsunojo would fucking remember and would have said something. You know what I mean by now? So like, you know what I mean? Like, and that never really comes up. So what's on this note is a reply made by the woman who that remark is directed to. It might mean that this woman wishes to disappear like they foam in a river of tears before reaching the Sanzu River. Tetsunojo, why did you give me this poem? Right, because he... And I don't think we ever... I don't know if he explains it. I can't remember. Is the one who will become foam and vanish supposed to be me? But I haven't told him much about being a transient. Wait, no. I thought I understood what he meant when he called himself a freeloader. We were from hell, and he was a human. This was not a place for him to be, that much I knew. He never told me he liked me, and I didn't tell him I liked him either. But still... People from hell are stubborn and spiteful, you know. If it's come to this, I swear I'll bring him back to this house! 
I'll make him take care of this plant. And I'll make him drink coffee from this mug. <laughs> you will drink coffee out of this mug and you will like it, old man. <laughs> to be fair, all of them are old men. Welcome to Hell Mansion. The venue is rented out to a private party tonight. Do you have an invitation on hand? Now isn't the time to be playing around. Did something happen? Tetsunojo left money behind and left the house. He doesn't intend on returning again. I know. What? He didn't intend to stay with us in the first place. I'm sure you knew what was going to happen too, right? You just ignored it. If he says he's going to leave, we have no right to stop him. And, in fact, we can't just leave a regular human there living with us. So it's the right move for him to have left. Goemon's like, Shh, whatever, I just don't like him. <laughs> he's such a little bitch in this round, I love it. My body couldn't move after having such a sound argument thrust at me so suddenly. Well, I know, but... It feels great with less fuss around to deal with. Liar! Yeah, again, Goemon's that dad who didn't want the cat but loves that motherfucking cat. You were the one who bought that mug, Goemon. I told you, didn't I? It wouldn't feel right making coffee with one person being left out. Yeah, but... You haven't changed at all, Goemon. No guests without an invitation are permitted into the park. I get a call from the daughter of Enma here. Hey... It's true. She's supposed to be the one watching over both of them, so I thought I should ask her to watch their fight. So, why is Sansa Burrow here too? Because where she goes, he goes? Okuni and I are parts of a whole. I mean, seriously, they're like, tethered. It's almost time, but neither of them are here. And they didn't start already without us knowing, did they? I don't think they would have done that. I can't remember which one of them says this, even though I played this already. I'm pretty sure it's, uh... Ichise, but... Hello, everyone! It's time for our fabulous show! I think. I can't remember. I... <laughs> oh, I get going on with this. He's so adorable. He has such a baby face in this sprite. There he is! He's here! Everybody getting ready to attack. Where is he? Did she say? Welcome to Hell Mansion. Please put away your weapons as they're dangerous. As far as I can see, a Simon isn't here. I guess we might not have to worry about him being erased. Good evening. It's me, Jack. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm so excited for what's about to happen tonight. That sounds fucked up. Everyone, please put away your weapons like he asked. I'll be enough to handle this. Sure. Take care of it, then. You said it, so now you better win. If you say so, we'll literally just sit back and watch, then. Make that edamame and rice again. I put away my whip and gazed at the two men. I don't want Tetsunojo to lose. But I want Ichise to be safe, too. Before we start the show, tell me something. Why is the one I'm up against you, Jack? You and I are both people who serve under Lady Shinobikini, so we should be on the same side. Do you intend on betraying her? I've already talked about this with her. What? Death to the traitor. That's a pretty common punishment, but I can't die. Even though you might not know how it works, you've heard from Akari that I've died once, right? Are you from hell, too? No, I'm not. I'm just a cowardly, worthless, spineless, normal guy. Well, I guess I'm not normal. Some things led me to be unable, be unable to die so easily. As such, it seems like Shino can inject her blood into mine like she did to yours. Her power is the panopticon. She shapes her own blood into threads, inserting them into the bodies of others, allowing her to control them. In that manner, she can affect the cells in a body, making things like the rapid healing of injuries. A piece of cake for her, I'm sure. I thought as much. Very 
regeneration after my death come from extremely powerful healing. Which means her blood is tossed out of my body as it's considered a foreign substance. There's no choice but to cast out a man who can't be controlled nor killed. You traitor. Sure, I have nothing to argue back with on that sentiment. Why does a traitor like you challenge me? Do you intend to prove that you've lowered yourself to the pawn, that of a pawn of hell? I wanted to help you as someone on your side. We both went through a lot under Ikari, complaining about him all the time. I remember. The one time you listened to one of my new songs for the first time, you told me. I like it a lot. I'm positive it'll sell. What? And she says expressions softened. I don't like people. Lots of things keep me detached from the entertainment industry. But I still have pride in the pieces that I make. If I ever get to be the lead for another show again, I want you to make the theme song. Your schedule board was completely bare after your accident. But your eyes when you told me that told that to me back then. And I were looking toward the future. You know, I really did want to support you. But unfortunately, none of that happened. With all things considered, I will be throwing the name of Jack away tonight. He really is intending on leaving tonight. So the last thing I do will be to settle things here. Shut it! Huh? Tetsunojo easily dodged away from the yo-yo which -yo Chisei spun toward him. That's why he's the red spinner. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Huh? He's got this in the bag. Damn it. That's no good, at Chisei. You might have your body strengthened by Shino, but I'm pretty confident in being able to avoid your attacks. You... Did she say, stop it? Did she say, I respect you? Wh what are you? I ran away from justice. I ran away from protecting people. And I was, of course, punished for it. Tetsunojo? You made that boy's wish come true. You've tried to make your own ideas of justice come true. You're so much better than I am. Quiet. I'm not falling for your obvious attempts at catching me off guard. Ichisei! No matter how many times Ichisei threw his yo-yo, Tetsunojo easily avoided it. Hey, what is he trying to do? He's not going to win just by running away all the time. It's not like I don't understand that he doesn't want to attack it, she say. But at this rate, it'll be morning. What do we do, Goemon? Nothing. Tetsunojo said he'd take care of this, so I'm sure he has an idea of how to win. How to win? Jack, you've been doing nothing but dodging and running away. Are you trying to give me pity? And she say, stop this! If you continue being controlled by that woman's blood, the only path that awaits you is destruction. That path awaits me anyways! If I were to die in the streets with no one looking my way, I'd rather be destroyed under the spotlight. If even just for a short while, if I could get people to remember it, she say, Tatsumi is the red spinner, that would be my final wish. Everyone's looking for an ally of justice. That's why I have to respond in kind to everyone's cheers. That's the job of an actor, right? Did she say? It was all so sad. The end to this miracle was just so horrible. You understand now, right? Anyone getting in the way of that needs to be destroyed! The yo-yo that shot out of Ichise's hand flew straight toward me. Spacey! Don't underestimate me! I remember this. Uh, I mean, I remember all of it, like, as it's going through. But, like, I specifically remember this because I remember being like, good. Because, like, he's flinging it at me and, like, oh. And I whip out my whip and I'm like, fuck you, bro. I don't need no man to protect me. I liked it. I liked it so much. And I still like it, okay? It still hits. You're like, hell yeah. Second time doing it, but it's still like, fuck yeah, girl. Like... Yeah, I mean, okay, we don't have, like, a strong power. We're not a good fighter or anything like that. We have to kind of protect them by taking their pain. Sure, it's kind of like, whatever. But, like, 
I like the fact that, oh, Jack didn't, like, jump in front. Oh, no, you got injured for me. Nah, uh uh We just showed our Hell Guardian nature, like, nah, okay, I can take care of myself. Like, they've done a good job, like, kind of making everything partnery. You know what I mean? Like, yes, we not may not be able to fight, and our prisoners have to fight the bad guys, and we take on their pain so that they can fight, and then, like, whatever. So, like, you know, we kind of got the short end of the stick. But at least... In this moment, she just whipped out her whip and was like, Pching! Like, fuck off, bro. Hell no. Hell no. I may not be able to kick your ass, but I can whip it. And I will whip it good. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I hit the yo-yo away with my whip and it she say, jump back. Oh, very nice. Way to go, Lord Help Guardian. I knew you could handle that much. Of course I can. I love it. Uh, this time! Stop it! I deflected the yo-yo away again. I just, I love it. It's so good. <laughs> so this is the Lord Princess of Hell's strength. What do we do? Maybe I really am being too soft, not wanting to hurt Ichise, a human. I think I'd be able to subdue and capture him with the other's help, but I would intervene in their fight. Just disappear already! Disappear, 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 please! Anyone, anyone who gets in my way, just disappear! He was simply screaming at this point. That's why none of us could move. I told you to disappear! Yet Chisei fixed his grip on his yo-yo again. Chisei, won't you listen to me? Tetsunojo? I mean, intend to keep going. I guess I have no choice but to act. Everyone swallowed their breath at Tetsunojo's deep voice. Sure. Deep voice. <laughs> Koto Dama, which resides in all living things, heed my voice and show yourself. This ornamented fabric of mine, become a beautiful sword. Singer-songwriter. Oh, look, we get to do the library thing again. Singer-songwriter. Oh, that's true, because, I mean, like, I, I opened their old save, so. Tetsunojo Amai's desire. Using a kotodama, he can change the purpose of one thing into another. It can be imagined as transforming a dog into a cat. The object returns to its original state in 30 minutes. Come forth! Oh, Murasamemaru. Murasamemaru? Something like that. Listen. La later on, they, they, uh, they shorten it, and it's so much easier to say. What? And now his scarf is a shiny, sparkly sword. It's been a while, Murasa... Murasa Mamaru. Okay, something like that. What? Huh? No way! So that guy does have a desire! He didn't seem like at all... Seem like a... He didn't seem at all like he had one. I couldn't read that the first time I read it either. Did Sinojo's just scarf turn into... A sword? This... Isn't an illusion? I looked around in my surprise to see even the others gazing at him as well. He looks so different just without the scarf around his neck. That's all that's different, and it's just, but yet it's so different. Could also be the intensity in his face, but... On that day, I was told by the man from hell, Fierce in his grave. You don't have the right to cross the Sunzu River and receive the Great King's judgment, so you may wander about alive forever. However, you may never brandish a blade. Have you ever point a blade at anyone during your travels with it? And, oh. Have you ever point a blade at anyone during your travels, and with it, shed their blood? Their soul will break apart. Before I must cross the Mitsuse River, I wish I could simply vanish like the foam in a tear. Spacey. Recently, I've been experiencing tremendous pain. I remember how souls wear away as a person's body is revived again and again. I suspect I'll be vanishing sometime soon. That's an Ojo! I'm sure I'll be shedding blood with this blade. And if I do, I will disappear. I don't want to have to see it. And the sight of someone I respect hurt the woman I love. In that case, I will stop him, even if it takes my life. I'll boldly shatter to pieces tonight, disappearing even after being unable to find what it was I was meant to do. That is... what I hope for. No, you... just can't! 
back then, I was running from everything. It's only natural for me to be cursed. No, it isn't! Goodbye. But... Oh, but I'll say this. No matter who you might fall in love with, no man can pour tea as good as I can. Or has a great face, voice, and personality as mine. I do remember this the first time because I'm like, not only did you say, no one else can pour tea like me, Valley. You're like, no one else is as awesome as me, though. Also, by the way, just throwing fucking shade so hard and it suck up so goddamn beautiful. I love it. It's hilarious. <laughs> And Goemon takes personal offense to it because in in, in Tetsunojo's mind, he's like, Goemon's going to be the one to steal you away. Absolutely right. And yet you're throwing shade at Goemon. Like, <laughs> could be him throwing shade at anyone in the future. But you know, in his mind, he's like, Goemon's going to steal this bitch from me. And Goemon's like, shut the fuck up. Anyway, die. And shut up. Stop yammering. Hurry up and vanish already. He's like, please, so I can take her. I love it. Oh, my God. Come on. Coward! Traitor! You coward! I can't believe you were hiding that! Alright then, everyone. Goodbye. My love, please don't forget. The taste of my tea. Yeah, okay. Tetsunojo! My name is Tetsunojo Amai. The one trapped in endless death. As I repent, fall down to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ichisei! <laughs> he was too fast for the human eye to follow. If it weren't for the blood running down both arms and both legs of Ichisei's, I wouldn't have known he was cut by Tetsunojo. I won't take your life, but fighting with those arms and legs is impossible now. Damn it! Ichisei, I'm sorry for being so underhanded. But I don't want to have to see your destruction. And just then... It appears you've brandished a blade, Tetsunojo, am I? Like... You think... Takamura shows up and is gonna be like, Oh, look, you did something! Nope. This motherfucker. You're like, Sensei, no, no! I know he brandished it, but he saved everybody, right? That's a good thing. He did a good thing, right? Yeah? 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 Sensei Nono? That's you! The corporate slave. When did he get here? What a foolish man you are. Allow me to personally remove your soul so you can never return to the cycle of reincarnation again. Like, 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 don't you just, like... <laughs> still kind of mad about this. Like, I know what happens, but I'm still kind of mad about this. Like, Sensei Nono, he was... He was he's fighting and helping us and doing something noble and good, like But he's over there like, no, but you used a sword, so like, bad. You could have shot him! Would have been fine, but you used a sword, bitch. Nope. Mm -mm. No loopholes here. Like, damn, motherfucker. What? Agil, Ungil, time for work. Ah. Uh, moon! At Sensei Nona's request, Akio and Ungio began rapidly spinning around him, covering his body in blue and orange flames, and then... Then there's this. You know what? It's just as fucking good. It's... Just as fucking... Good. The second time around, look at how goddamn sexy he is like this. Look at him. Just fucking look at him. Oh, dear God. Okay. Anyway. Hmm. A retainer to King Enma, Ono no Takamura. While cursed, fall to hell. Candlemaker. Lay in a moment with rice! Kikonosuke's got his priorities straight. <laughs> Some of this is what you meant. Sensei Nono, please stop! He never showed me an attack like that when he was training me with my whip. No, no, I don't trust you. Do you need to take a potty break? It's only been 30 minutes, but I know you need to go potties every, like, 10 minutes. Anyway, stare at Sensei Nono for a hot second, because that motherfucker's gorgeous. I know, I know. 
one of the things that they thought, while well, I'm getting the bird a break and I can't see that far away from my TV, like someone suggested was like, um, even though my air conditioning unit's outside, like, but it, like, there's also, I guess, part of it upstairs in the attic, um, where like the drip tray is or whatever. And like, they were like, oh, maybe it's overflowing. But the thing is, is like, when my landlord was looking at it, it would be like, right over where I sit. And like, the, that's not where the leak is. And he's like, no, that's bone dry. But so I'm like, as my air conditioner keeps coming on, I'm like, looking up at my ceiling, like, okay, you're getting like, whatever. But like, the spot isn't still not wet. Hold on. We're going to have a trip. Come with me. You guys, come with me. My headset's long enough to, like, step up on my step stool. And then you can, like, call for help if I trip and fall. No, see, it's not damp. And then my air conditioner's been going. It's actually pretty... It's dry. It's just stained now. Because, like, if I feel the... Like, put my hand in the same... It feels exactly the same as the rest of the ceiling. It's just... Like a stain now, obviously. Because um, I was like, my air conditioner was running all night. And if it was air conditioning, like if it was the drip tray or like the air conditioning unit, like something was leaking or whatever from up there, like it wouldn't have been in that corner based on where he was when he was like looking and taking photos or whatever. And, um, you know, it would be literally dripping over me where I am uh, right now. And not in the corner, but right there in that spot is a, the vent pipe from the kitchen, I guess, goes right up there. So it could just be like a, like a leak around that, like from the roof or whatever. But the plywood that's under it, like that's all dry. So, and I don't know, like if you poured water on like plywood boards, cause I mean like now I'm just like, huh, it's been a long time. Like, since I ever did anything, like, like I, I don't know if I ever poured water on plywood to be like, when it dries, do you see a stain or, like, proof of damage? Because then if it's not coming around the roof, like, that's, he's like, that's all dry. But you know what I mean? Like, the plaster in your roof gets wet stains and now there's a water stain even though it's dry right now you know what i mean but like would the plywood if it had leaked through or whatever or i mean and i don't know what it looks like maybe the pipe like the plywood only goes up to it so if it was dripping down behind the pipe yes the wood wasn't wet but it was dripping around the pipe got underneath you know what i mean like i don't know that they cut the plywood and went around the pipe so it could be like plywood goes up to where the pipe is you know what I mean? Because I think the plywood's up there just to cover over the beams so that you don't, like, have to step on the beams to not fall through the ceiling. You know what I mean? It's, like, just up there to make moving around easier. So it's not like they retrofitted it fancy, like, oh, and then we cut the plywood and we cut a little circle and we put it up there. It's, like, the wood would probably just be going up to so you could get to it where, you know, like, so if it was dripping, like, from the roof, it wouldn't... It would have been leaking down, if it's just a small enough hole, it's leaking down the pipe and then just puddling on, you know, basically what would be the attic floor slash my ceiling and then it starts, you know what I mean? So that could be why that doesn't look wet either or doesn't have any water damage because it didn't actually hit on that. It's If it's like a technically slow enough leak, it's not like a gaping hole where it's pouring in, you know, it's just kind of like cascading down you know what i'm saying anyway um so hopefully that's just where it is because like if that's it you could just kind of like seal up around it you know what i mean like, i don't know anyway ah <sighs> so but all right bird had his break anyway uh he never showed me an attack like that. okay we're that's all right he was going easy on me this is the true power of king enma's retainer drown in your pride and die look at how happy and gleeful he looks while he's about to murder my boyfriend like i'm not gonna lie i love it this man's sexy as shit <laughs> and then he laughs no this isn't his true power he even seems like he's taking it easy all right guys let's leave this to the corporate slave and go home come on it's such an ass uh, yeah, let's go. Come on, Kikanosuke! 
And this isn't our time to shine. Let's go. Don't be ridiculous. We have to save Tetsunojo. That's all right. My love, please don't interfere. This was all brought on by myself. This is absurd. I'll never, ever accept that parting gift. Parting gift? I got a call from a delivery person. He asked if it was okay to bring in a thousand boxes of Neowful. See, I told you. Thousand. Huh? And a lawnmower for Sharaku. No way! Tetsunojo, I love you! For Yona, a sports watch with matching headphones. Huh? You, you don't have to do that. For Kikinosuke, a premium figure from Helma Cop Party. Wait, really? The one I couldn't get because they didn't have an address in the human realm? And for Goemon, on a premium hand mill. Oh, thanks. Don't be happy about this! If you accept those gifts, that means Tetsun Tetsunojo really will be gone. And by the way, what did you get, my lady? This motherfucker only left me cash. I mean, don't get me wrong, I ain't complaining about money, but like, rude. An envelope with cash. That's the best one! Tetsunojo, do you think you could get away with just giving me money? I'm never going to accept that. I want your life and your soul and your heart. Hang on now, let's take what we can. Shuriku, you can at least read the room at a time like this. No, I don't think it'll resolve anything, but that's just... That was the only way I could think of to express my feelings by giving me an envelope fat with cash. I'll accept it. You know what? If that's your love language, I will accept gifts of money. Although it was only for a few days, it really was fun living there. So I wanted to show my gratitude. I don't want your gratitude. I don't want everything to end. Drown in your ignorance and die. Ugh. Sensei, no, no! Whatever is the matter, are you able to do nothing at all against me? What? You talk big about not wanting to see the destruction of another while not fighting back against your own? Damn you! There's nothing more pitiful to watch than a narcissist simply trying to validate himself. No, I'm not! Like, Sensei Nono just fucking baited him. He was like, what, aren't you gonna fight back? And he's like, alright, and he's like, ha 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 ha. Now it's twice as difficult, fuck you. I duplicated. And drown in your desires and die. Yeah. No! Oh, right, I forgot to mention. My desire, Candlemaker, allows me to synchronize with the soul of my opponent. Candlemaker, Ono no Takamura's desire. He's able to control Akio and Ukio after making them appear by burning candles made of his soul. He can turn his ener enemy's soul into a candle and begin to consume it while he fights them. Once it burns out, the soul disappears. Synchronize. In other words, Akio and Ungio use your life force as sustenance. I suppose it's about time you vanish soon, no? Uh. I don't quite approve of that look of contempt on you. You don't look like you're willing to accept your death. You don't look at all like you're willing to accept your death, sorry. You said you were ready to die, right? And then should you not instead sit still with your dignity intact and allow yourself to be beheaded? Please stop! I grabbed my whip and stood next to Tetsunojo. Oh? I've respected you for so long, Sensei Nono, but I can't believe this. I won't allow you to torment someone who's no longer able to defend themselves. A fresh new professional hell guardian dares to try and stand in my way. I do! Also, I'm pretty sure my dad will be pissed if you kill me. I think he loves me more than you. Just FYI. You are no match for me. <laughs> Not even giving me a chance to swing my whip. A burning pain seared across my thighs. Spacey! No, I'm no match for him at all, but I'm not going to give up now. 
Tetsunojo's wandered around alone for years, experiencing more deaths than he can count. I know he's repented and atoned enough. Please, don't hurt him anymore. I took my whip in hand again. This is where you whip Sensei Nono. You're so naive. <laughs> Spacey! I received a cut to my right arm, which held the whip. The pain emanating from emanating from it paralyzed my hand. Ugh. So what do you think, Imai? If you vanish, Agio and Ungio will stop. She will no longer be hurt. You'd rather lose your own life in order to protect her, right? How about you hurry up and vanish now? It's like... Takamura and Goemon are like on the same side with really hating Jack and wanting him to disappear. That's the garbage slave for you. He's pretty harsh. Drown in your arrogance and die. But he's so goddamn beautiful when he's sexy like this. Look at him. God. Well, he's gone now, but... You won't kill me! There's even more of the... Wait. Do they increase the number the more I try and attack? That's why he goaded you into it. There's no way to fight back. You still refuse to vanish. My life's gonna end anyway, so I'll take you down with me. This time you die. That won't be happening. I'm already dead after all. Take this! <laughs> Tetsunojo! You are tougher than I thought. Ugh. Ugh. Damn you! Tetsunojo's body heaved as he breathed, yet he still showed no signs of letting go of his sword. With so many wounds all over his body, it was a wonder how he still stood. It's impossible to defeat me with your strength. I'm quite busy, so please just let me return to my duties. Even if it is, I'll do it. Is this because you want to impress her? Is it because you want to retaliate from the grudge you've had against me? And then yours is but the most shallow form of righteousness, not even worth being scoffed at. What is he talking about? What is he trying to make Tetsunojo do? Ooh, there we go! There's a CG for you. Forgot about this one. That's not it. With a dauntless look in his eyes, Tetsunojo ready to sword again. We've shown just how incapable I can be to her so many times, and I'd be a lie to say I didn't have a grudge against you. But right now, I hold the Murasame for my own pride. I saw no fear in his eyes. His body was in a miserable state, yet he seemed more noble than anyone else here. That day, I left the sword behind and left my home. I didn't know what the difference was between protecting and hurting someone, and I ran. I refused to die and live for so long, yet I still don't know quite what justice is supposed to be. Ow, I'm sorry. You wanted me to pet you, buddy. Lord Takamura, I'm sure you've heard of this phrase before. When fighting the monster, one must be careful not to become the monster themselves. Because when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss is gazing back at you. Righteousness is just like... the monster. That's why I'll stop trying to find an answer. I hold the Murasame now, simply to protect that which I want to protect. The expression on his face was like none other I'd seen before. But out of all those I've seen on him, this looked the best. That may be a woman I love, and maybe someone I respect. Jack? It may be a child whose name I don't even know. And maybe an elderly person who might die the next day. There's a limit to what it is, to what it is I can protect. But that's why, for that which I can protect, I promise I will. And in order to do so, I won't vanish. Whoa! No way! He knocked up Sensei Takamura's hat. He did. And look at how he still looks beautiful, even my his goofy hat. Know your place. God, he's so beautiful. Look at when he's all angry and sexy like this. Like, stop it. Sir, you don't have a route, but you probably should. <laughs> Tetsunojo! I held up 
Tetsunojo, who looked like he was going to fall over any second. <laughs> no, don't vanish, please. You know in the bad end, he's totally going to vanish. I'm impressed you made it through that. You're just as... No, more capable than I imagined. Ah, 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 ah. Un, 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 un. Sensei no no? Akio and Ungyo quickly returned to normal, waving in the air as if they were trying to praise Tetsunojo. Capable? And why are Akio and Ungyo behaving like that? I will leave the remainder of your punishment up to King Enma. You're welcome to come as well if you wish, Enma. Lord Takamura, a moment, please. We'd like permission to bring Ichise back to the temple. Stop. Wait. What do you intend to do with him? That's not something for us to decide. But it's not as if he betrayed Lady Shinobikni, so I'm sure he won't be punished too harshly. Uh, go ahead, then. Sensei, no, no. Let us be off. Uh, Tetsunojo! Huh? What is this place? This is the Great Judgment Hall of Enma Palace! Whoa! Who's that? What a rude guy! Tetsunojo! Um, it may be hard to believe, but this is King Enma. What? Uh, oh, now that you mention it, I've seen that face in commercials and posters. We will now begin the trial for Tetsunojo Imai. The candle of life for the criminal Tetsunojo Imai indicated he would meet his death in the second year of the Bunroko period. One of the time periods of Japan denoting the period between 1592 and 1596. Bunroko ended in five years and was followed by the Kicho period afterwards. Hopefully I spent all that right, but whatever. However, in his struggle for his life, his desire awakened and he drew a sword upon myself who would come to guide him into his afterlife. If he had attacked a normal human being, the injury he would have dealt would have killed them immediately. Tetsunojo, do you have any objections? No, I have none. All of it's true. Tetsunojo! I will have order from the gallery. My apologies. I learned how to use a sword at a young age. I wanted to be someone who could protect others. My father laughed at me when I told him that and said this. You have no need to take hold of a sword. The daimyo will protect us. We give money to them so they die to protect us. It's very much what a businessman would say. I eventually came to hate war. It's not as if I came to agree with my father. I burned the temples, the towns, and the fields, and all that's left after fighting is rubble and corpses. Valid. If that was what it meant to protect someone, it meant that in order to protect someone, someone else must be killed. Not necessarily, but in a time of war and in the time period, sure. I gave up on using swords. Time passed and the great thief Goemon Ishikawa began to appear in the capital in Sakai. What? My father and Okuni mentioned that he was about my age. He stole money from businessmen and the wealthy and gave it back to the poor. As I was lost in ignoring what was going on around me, a man my same age was loved by the people. I think I wanted to hypo- I kept calling Goemon like the Japanese Robin Hood, but then you were like, okay, but like, did Goemon exist before Robin Hood myth existed? Because like, which one came first? Like the chicken or the egg, right? So like- do you think in Japan, when they hear stories of Robin Hood, they're like, oh, so like, white man's going on Ishikawa? Like, because like, it didn't occur to me until I was reading this and I'm like, ah. so he's like the Japanese Robin Hood. Yeah, we know that, right? Because we've played games before where he's been mentioned or whatever and he's existing, you know, and it's like, but then that just occurred to me and I was like, wait a minute though, but like, do you think, was the Robin Hood myth? Like, because I don't think Robin Hood was a real person. <laughs> My brain is like, I'm pretty sure Robin is not a real person. But, like, was Robin Hood created based on... Because you know a lot of, like, you know, European myths and stuff like that can you can trace back to, like, different, like, 
uh, like stories from other cultures and stuff like that. So you're like, did they get the Robin Hood idea from Goemon Ishigawa? Do they exist around the side? You know what I mean? Because like now I have no idea like what time period Robin Hood was supposed to have existed in. And like, you know what I mean? It's just because you grow up hearing Robin Hood and then you like learn about other cultures and you like realize you have similar like stories and things. And you're like, which one came first though? Did Goemon Ishikawa come first? And then Robin Hood was like, oh yeah, we're going to like do that. So now like. But still, you're used to culturally what the stories you've heard, the legends, the myths, whatever, you know, you're used to hearing like all like watching the Disney Robin Hood cartoons where he was like a fox, you know, whatever, <laughs> like whatnot. And then like you learn about going on Ishikawa and you're like, oh, okay, he's Japanese Robin Hood. But like, then it would occur to me, I'm like, do you think people in Japan when they hear Robin Hood are like, oh, okay, like it's the white man version of like, you know what I mean? <laughs> The white version of going on Ishigawa, you know what I mean? Like, because like to them, they've grown up with stories of going on Ishikawa, not Robin Hood. And like, when you hear of Robin Hood, then if you're Japanese, you're like, oh, that's you know what I mean? So it's just it was just kind of funny in my head. I'm like, huh, oh, just wonder, because like obviously, like you when you're you you grow up knowing your I don't want to say cultural stories because I mean like just European culture and like things steal from everything and everything's taken from everything else. You know what I mean? Inspired by other stories and whatever, but like you don't know unless you grew up with like Japanese friends or family or whatever, you wouldn't know about Japanese stories like that. You know what I mean? Until you get into playing games like this or Japanese culture or whatever. And then you hear about these things, but that's the first thing you think, you know, Oh, Japanese Robin Hood. But like, he might have come first. I'm like, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny. I'm like, huh, actually, wait. So, like, you know, so if you were a Japanese child growing up and you're hearing stories and then you hear about like the Robin Hood legends, then you're like, oh, well, you know what I mean? So it's like you think the reverse. It's just, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny and amusing. But anyway, so, you know, he's basically Robin Hood. So. Even though he was a thief, he was revered for his acts of justice. And yet he still ended up in the worst hell ever. So what is justice then? After losing my way and abandoning the way of the sword, was there any further disgrace for me to embarrass? That's why, after that, I wanted to throw away everything and just run away to the southern countries. It's only natural for a coward like myself to be attacked by pirates. I mean, the whole boat you were on was attacked, so it wasn't just you. And yet you tried to kill Takamura. Yes. Because I left my sword at the mansion, deciding I would never use it again, I was helplessly cut down by the pirates. And yet back then, Murasame came back to my hand. I didn't want to die again. I wanted to live. Before I could even think I'd attack this person. A man who abandoned the sword because he didn't want to kill others took it in his hand again because his own life was so precious. I mean, you know, it's just so utterly ridiculous. Think it only natural for me to continue being cursed. You were told your soul would be destroyed if you attacked someone again with a blade. I'm sure it was painful having to live all this time. Did it not come to mind for you to attack someone with a sword in order to intentionally end things? I did so many times. So why didn't you do so? I think because I wanted to atone for all those I couldn't protect. If I hadn't looked away, if I hadn't ran away, there may have been lives I could have saved, even if just a few. Another reason was because I wanted to know. I wanted to know what that justice was that I couldn't find for myself before. Did you find it? I found someone I want to protect, no matter what. And I also understood how terrifying, fragile, and how empty the meaning behind those word, the word justice is. Still, I... I wish for a Chise Tatsumi to look forward to living life. Huh. But you became his enemy too, didn't you? Great King, do you know what words are written on my seal? Yeah, stupid, right? <laughs> to have 
have that on me. It's the greatest shame upon me and my family. <laughs> it's still fucking funny that his things are stupid. And now then, Great King, it's time to give your sentence. What? Already? Please, you have to listen to what the other six kings have to say. This is more than enough for the stupid fool. Great King! No, Father! No! My dear, kind daddy! Please spare him! Please consider extenuating circumstances for him! I really can't believe how much of a suck-up you can be if you want to. Meow. What do you think, Carmen? Meow. Right, I see. All right, Tetsunojo, choose. Life or death? Father? If you choose life, I'll give you the life of a healthy and happy human. Huh? If you choose death, I'll send you off to one of the hells, but... Considering your crimes, you'll be in the worst of them all, the eternal hell. No! He suffered for so long. You want him to be tormented further? There's nothing to consider. I choose death. Tetsunojo! I have no right to be happy. I aided the escapees and let on the humans in their plot. I believe I should atone for those crimes. But most of all... The woman I love is from hell. If so, I wish to be here. If I'm able to live where she does, then I'll endure the most terrible tortures there are. Tetsunojo. <laughs> oh, you want to go to hell just to be with me? That's so sweet. It's kind of romantic. No, oh, no, that's not happening. I mean, my girl said she'll never have a man in her life after all. Huh? Is she even said... Father, do you think your daughter is so foolish she would forget her mission and drown in romance to me? Father, wait! Yeah, she refrained from doing just that. She didn't forget about her mission. She was worried about a chise and risked her life to protect a small child. Well, I suppose that wasn't so much because she had to for her duty, but because that's who she is. That's why I fell in love with her. Did he just say... He loves me? Did I mishear him? Girl! I, th I had the same complaint the first time I played this part. And, you know, whatever. Like, oh my god, did he just say he loves me? He said it like six times in the battle. The woman I love. I'm going to protect the woman I love if the woman I love is here. And then he's like, that's why I fell in love with her. Did he just say he loves me? Girl, he said it like 22 times to you in the last hour. Holy shit, did you just now get it? Like, you have got bricks between your ears. <laughs> You're not stubborn. You are a brick wall. Jesus. I know it's late to ask, but what happened to cutting my head off? <laughs> She's still hung up on that. Like, let it go. Yeah, sure. Well, I guess I'll just assign you to the eternal hell then. No, father, please rethink this. Well, I suppose we can talk it over. As part of your atonement, would you want to help out Takamura, who you hate so much? What? Help. I was watching through the Jahari mirror. 24 minutes and 43 seconds. A fantastic record, second to Goemon's. I consider you more than capable enough to be my pawn. A pawn of... King Enma. Yes, a pawn, my pet! Uh, by the way, Goemon is Taro, Yona is Akka, Kikonosuke is Pochi, and Sharaku is Shiro. Right, King. Do you mean... Daddy, are you saying... It's an Ojo, am I? And did you ever wonder why you were able to take hold of the Murasame back then? Because I wanted to live, right? I've been re researching artifact spirits, and your Murasame is quite fond of its owner. It should have been done with such a foolish owner who just wanted to flee, but it still wanted to protect such a fool and heeded your call. What? Your desire is strong and your skills with a sword are excellent. However, just be sure not to abandon your sword who cares for you. I'm sure it's quite satisfied now. It did take quite a while, but it knows how its owner feels. I see. I shall live so as not to bring Murasame shame. This time, I will. So with that said, sweetie, don't you want another skilled subordinate to work under you? Under me, over me, beside me, every fucking which way? Yes. 
I said the same thing the last time, and I'm going to say it again. I'm Look, if I remember the inappropriate comments I make, I will repeat them again for you. Because I'm not going to take your enjoyment away. Just because my life is in hell right now. I'm literally, we're playing a game about hell, and I feel like that's where I live at the moment. Father, Sensei, no, no, but for a brief moment playing these, it's like everything is okay. It's not going to stay that way, but right now everything's okay, because we're having fun here. Even having to replay this. Taking a couple of days because of, like, whatever, and not playing it right away was... A lot less, just took some of the stress of this off my shoulders, but I don't believe this. Is it all right for something so amazing to happen to me? I wish something amazing would happen to me and not amazingly bad. Universe, fuck off. I want something amazingly amazing, like awesome and good and wonderful. Were the two of them plotting something? With a bewildered look on him, Tetsunojo was looking back and forth at myself and father. Um, I can't remember what his nickname is. I know we get one, though. Lord Daughter of Enma. Suddenly, the look on his face changed. I was taken in by the straightforward and sincere look in his eyes. Will you allow me to be your subordinate? Tetsunojo. Would I be asking too much to live in that house again? I lightly shook my head side to side. I was so elated, so happy, I couldn't find any words to speak. Sweetie, what do you think? Thank you. Thank you, Great King. I'm utterly grateful for your kindness. Please make this man my subordinate. Ha! Ah, well done! To gain a husband and subordinate at one stroke! I can't wait to see what the man Takamura approves of can do. Whoa! Wh what the? Tetsunojo, you must disappear! I don't remember which one of them were the female kings, but whatever. Tetsunojo, you must disappear. King Shoko, King Taizan, which I won't let you get away with bullying him. The man excels in the literary arts and has plenty of wealth. You've made quite the splendid match, Hachi. I think Sote might have been one of the female ones. I don't remember, but one of the S's was. There's like six of them, though. Okay, three of them. <laughs> They're talking as if... No, were they watching through the Jahari mirror? Y you're all... You'll be learning more about them, but they're the kings of hell. These people and father are the ones who cast judgment on prisoners. Tetsunojo, you must leave! Tetsunojo, you must leave! Haji, you've done well. I'll be sure to discipline King Shoko and King Taizan later. This is an occasion to celebrate. Now you won't be a transient. A transient? I'll talk about that later. It's nothing to worry about now. All right, I've got it. Your name is Kuro. Taro, Aka, Pochi, Shiro, Kuro. That sounds nice. That's what it was. King Enma's nickname for Tetsunojo. I don't know why I couldn't remember it. Daddy, don't give him a name like that. Kuro. Does my curse really, really lifted now? Tetsunojo suddenly looked like he was feeling faint. I'm like, really free now. No. Because it's this CG. I didn't forget this one. Don't worry. I forgot about the other one, but I did not forget this one. Ever since we've gotten here, I've been like, oh, I remember this one. Ugh. You are. Look at, look at just the way she's looking at him so endearingly sweetly. And I'm just, it's just so beautiful. I love it. I, I'm sorry. I must be so pathetic right now. You don't need to be afraid anymore. Well, if you disappear from me again, I'll punish you. I won't do that. I promise. But I just can't believe it. It's real. All of this is. Your curse is lifted and you won't have to die those horrible deaths anymore. And you'll go back to the house and drink coffee from your mug. And you'll be beside me always. Spacey. Uh, sorry. I really want to hold you, but I'm just in such relief. I'll hold you instead, just like this. Yeah, I must look so pathetic. It's okay, sweetie. Sometimes we all just need to cry. This is the whole month of August has felt like that, so just cry. Just cry if you need to. King Enma, I accept your immeasurable kindness. I, Tatsunojo am I, humbly thank you from the bottom of my heart. I apologize for my state right now, but with you as my lord, I hereby pledge my loyalty to you. 
Oh, enough of the formalities. Just be sure you don't make my dear, sweet little daughter cry. If you do make her cry, I promise I personally will come smash her soul into pieces. Aww. We're not done yet. We're done with this part, though. Um, cause like King Enma's judgment. And now we go to chapter 12, which is our last chapter. Actually, I think this is exactly where I ended the first time we played through this on the chapter switch. Weird. Cause like, you know, you can never gauge. It's not like we just sit down, we read and then we, like we interject, we stop, we have thoughts. So like the fact that timing wise, I mean, I think I went over the last time too, but it's just weird that it stopped in the exact same spot. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's magical. Like, small wins. Got, it's not even a win. It's just, you got a, the little small things where you're like, wow, that's and the only good thing that's happened. And it's not even a good thing that happened in August. It's just interesting and it's not awful. So, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.